Hi, so today I'm continuing my installation of Debian that I started yesterday and uh, basically I got to the point where I installed Timeshift and took the first snapshot and after that things a bit went a bit random and I kind of was all over the place so basically what I did after that is I experimented a little bit uh, and I did install most of the software that I wanted to install but then I today I just reverted back to that first snapshot and I'm just gonna start over because uh, well I did some things that like created some random files all over the system and then I don't know what to delete what to keep so that's the whole point of having time shift so you can uh, like revert uh, back to a previous state of the system um, without like uh, having to basically avoiding the whole thing of having to fix everything manually because in reality it's just like it's either extremely difficult or like almost impossible because like every program that you install will leave something behind and like uh, potentially change something and so like that's very difficult to manage so it's very good to have something like time shift to use in these situations basically i'm still continuing to record with my phone um yesterday i did have some issues with autofocus like shifting around but i think it was towards the end and probably the part of the video that i will release up until the moment where i like took that first snapshot i, I think that was uh, all okay like the installation and just like the initial configuration so yes uh, since I already did some stuff yesterday after I took that first snapshot, I restored my user files as well, which I transferred, by the way, from my VM that I was experimenting with uh, up until now, which you, if you saw previous videos in this series, you already know about that. So I just transferred all of those files out of that VM and put them into my home folder and here uh, here they are basically um, I won't if, even have to reinstall uh, like Firefox and Waterfox uh, and Thunderbird uh, if you saw, didn't see my video on that I recommend checking it out because I explained how to do a manual installation of those apps so that they can basically maintain themselves and update themselves like not maintain themselves but update themselves so that self-updating feature of those apps works so i have them here in my opt uh, directory uh, like uh, an opt directory in my user's home folder so that um that is good so i don't need to like install those again basically because they're all like good to go even if i transferred all those files from the vm uh, i also actually transferred the vm itself as well i like the default directory is just like virtual box VMs in your user's home directory. I actually put it into local share virtual box VMs and there it is Debian. Like I, I just reverted the, the snapshot. So I already um, did some, like I did the, make, make the change, this change in the configuration of virtual box. And uh, what I expect since there is a config folder here uh, in dot config for virtual box once i reinstall it it should just pick everything up uh the where where i left it uh where i left it basically so like all of these files have already been subjected to my uh like what i did after i uh, took the first snapshot and then i tried some things out but these are all like my user files they don't really have much to do with the system it's mostly like configuration files like data files and cache files and stuff like that but um, and just like my personal user files and so on but like the system itself is, is reverted completely basically to the state uh, if i go over here to my to my checklist is basically uh, I did this post install configuration which um, oh, I'm, uh, let me see right so I did this I installed time shift uh, so basically I installed the system the base system uh, 
with uh, without a graphical environment. Then I configured the console font and like I uh, made it so that I don't have to enter the same encryption password for uh, two separate encrypted partitions that I created just so that it caches the password and it only asks it uh, once. Um, then I configured the console auto login. I set up the swap file with ZRAM and I installed time shift and then I took that snapshot and that's basically the state in which you can see uh, the system uh, now. Uh, the only changes that I, I did make like besides that are all in my user directory and so that's why you can see my prompt uh, there uh, which is not the default prompt and uh, that's why I have like all these files in my user folder as well um, but basically yeah so what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to install uh, the graphical environment again and uh, and basically install some software and I'm gonna share some things that I learned along the way when when I was experimenting with things yesterday I, I'm still figuring some things out uh, but like there was one particular fix that might be only kind of this uh, tuxedo thing like tuxedo is the company that made this laptop it's called tuxedo computers the company and the laptop that I'm on is called uh, tuxedo Stellaris 16 inch generation 5 so um, yeah there was like an issue with audio that I managed to fix um, by installing their package uh, so uh, that's what I'm gonna go over in this video as well all right so um, let's go ahead and um, and install some things uh, by the way, I'm using my uh, Logitech uh, keyboard here to uh, basically, it, it's already connected to my, to my laptop. I, I plugged in a, a USB, um, like a little USB dongle that they provide and uh, it's already connected to that and it was connected before because I configured it before that so like it still works even if there's no like we don't need to install any special drivers but it's basically it still works um, I will install one uh, app that helps you configure keyboards and, and mice that uh, like Logitech's uh, keyboards and mice but uh, like it also works very well without it so that's why I'm able to just uh, like switch between my Mac and my um, and my uh, Linux laptop uh, and use the same keyboard and I don't have to like lean over the camera and like uh, awkwardly try to reach for the keyboard and spend like make the video long and drawn out because of that and making it difficult for myself to edit so uh, okay let's uh, go ahead and start installing things um, so I basically I'm uh, let's see I'm finished with uh, the, this third uh, uh, step of post install configuration I installed time shift so I can close close that um, and um, so now I'm going to install the graphical environment and configure themes. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and do that. So sudo apt install xinet. Awesome. And uh, it's going to install all that stuff. All right, so awesome is installed I can now uh, I guess let me first before I launch it just I'll just go ahead and install um, Alexa appearance and K 
QT5CT and uh, all the themes um, so that I can just uh, go in and uh, change that right away. So LX appearance. Uh, QT5 CT and uh, let me install that and now the themes um, a Dwight uh, dash QT and uh, gnome dash themes dash extra dash data okay so all these things are installed so I can now start X and uh, Awesome has already read uh, the like my configuration file, so that's not the default configuration. Uh, it's my configuration that I already transferred uh, to the laptop. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I guess just uh, do the LX appearance uh, and uh, the other thing. First, so white or dark, apply, and uh, QT5 CT, and white or dark. So, um, yeah, so let me see. I'm going to. I only have like this terminal right now, which is going to be a tiny, the tiniest font you can almost can, the tiniest font you can possibly imagine. But um, I'm not going to like mess with the configuration right now because I'm going to change it quite soon. I just needed to quit awesome because. I removed the quit item from my menu so that I don't quit by mistake and like kill all of my windows. That wouldn't be a good thing. So, uh, right, I wanted to see if like that QT the theme uh, apparently needs like either a logout or restart uh, or reboot of the system so I'm I'm, try I'm gonna try and basically install a QT5 app uh, which uh, is gonna be keypass XC and see if it can pick up the theme and if, if it can't I'll try logging out and if that doesn't work, then I'll, I'll I'll reboot, I think, or maybe I won't reboot just to save some time. Uh, well, well, let's see how it goes. Key pass XC. Oh, it did pick up the theme. Okay. Well, um, for some reason, sometimes it does. Maybe the restart of the window manager was enough to. I guess maybe the re restart of the X session was enough to do that because I I basically shut down. X uh, and then I start with it again um, and so maybe that did the trick but uh, whatever it was I don't need to reboot and that's uh, that's good so I'll quit awesome once again so that we have like a, a font that is readable uh, and uh, I'm going to move on to to installing some more things. Well, let me just go ahead and kind of jump a little bit ahead uh, uh, when it comes to just like, I should probably like include it, <laughs> shift things around with my checklist because it, 
at this stage it would be nice to have a terminal and I'm going to install Alacrity uh, I have been installing like the XFC4 terminal but that's kind of quite a heavy graphical app and uh, since I'm doing this minimalist uh, installation Alacrity does pretty well. It was kind of a bit glitchy in the VM when I was testing it. It's like whenever I would change the screen, the cursor would disappear for some reason. But like uh, on the laptop, that does not uh, hap happen. So that's good. I don't have to like worry about that. So I can just like actually use Alacrity here, and uh, I don't have to use the console. Um, so I can. Open Tmux. Oh, I can't open open Tmux because it's not installed yet. But uh, yeah, well, okay. Uh, I'll I'll quit awesome once again, and uh, I guess uh, okay. Let me just go in order here. The console uh, is fine. Uh, so I'll install uh, next thing I'm gonna install is uh, Solar which is the Logitech uh, like it's it's an app uh, that control that you can use to set up the Logitech devices it's like in the description it says Logitech unifying receiver peripherals manager so uh, that's what it is. I'm gonna install it. Solar. And uh, I'll open Awesome once again, uh, just to show you how it looks while we're on the topic oh yeah it's it gives this message first that like uh it says found the logitech receiver but did not have permission to open it if you've just installed solar try removing the receiver and plugging it back in so i'll i'll do that here's the let me show it to the camera. Here's the receiver, by the way. So that's just like a very small USB dongle. Uh, and uh, I'll plug it back in and it will work. I already did it yesterday, so. Uh, yes. So if I open it again, it recognizes both my keyboard and my mouse but the font is very small right now so i'm not gonna like get into this just wanted to show you how it looks um, so uh, let me go back to the console again and uh, continue so i installed solar and uh, then i'm going to install nvidia driver i also have this uh, lib av codec extra listed here but i'm gonna wait uh, and not install it just yet because i just want to see if any problems arise uh, which i can fix by installing this codec so because i'm not really sure what it does basically i did read like the description in apps like app show lib av codec codec uh, dash extra but it didn't really explain very much, so I'll just uh, uh, wait for that. But um, maybe it's just like includes like some proprietary co codecs or something like that. But um, whatever. Uh, I'll install the NVIDIA driver now. Okay, it says that uh, basically that there is a conflict within a currently loaded kernel module, which is called Nouveau, which is a non, uh, which is a free um, module, and I'm installing NVIDIA, which is non-free, 
and the easiest way to fix this is to re reboot the machine once the installation is finished. Okay, since it asked uh, us to reboot, uh, let me do that. So I'll type sudo reboot, and uh, it's rebooting. Okay, so um, we've done that. Uh, so what's next? Uh, let's see. Um, the Tuxedo software. So I did run into some issues with this. Uh, I wasn't able to uh, to get the like. Um, keyboard and uh, um, basically like, there is a keyboard driver that controls like uh, the backlight lighting or like what's it called like backlight of uh, of the keyboard and uh, yeah I'm still working on that I'm sure I'll figure it out but uh, for now I'll, I'll just skip this because I don't want to like install I want to that's pr pretty much the primary reason why I decided to revert to the previous snapshot and also like it gave me a chance to record this video but um, yeah I uh, I just want to figure out properly what uh, how this works and what I need to install and then just only install it once and do it with a snapshot that I will revert to and then uh, like install what I know uh, works and only that and not just like a bunch of do a bunch of random things uh, so I'll skip this uh, inst installing tuxedo software for now although I will install one thing um, from tuxedo so let me see um, but before I do that let me just like install some basic things and then take a snapshot of what I have at the moment uh, so that I uh, have like another clean snapshot to uh, come back to if anything uh, doesn't go well uh, and then so that I don't have to like reinstall all these things that I just uh, installed so um, basically what do I need uh, I will install um, Yeah, so I'll install a, a couple of like basic uh, system uh, utilities like NeoFetch, HTOP. Uh, I already installed uh, Alacrity, then uh, I'll install Tmux. I'll install Vim and specifically the GTK3 uh, version of this package because I, I like having uh, system clipboard integration and that provides that uh, GTK the, the GTK3 version of the package provides that then I'll install git and uh, xclip and uh, I already have keypass xc uh, which I just have on the same list so um, so yeah that's what I'm gonna install uh, my user password and let's install all that stuff and when, once that is done I will take a snapshot I think because well I also might install VirtualBox I think yeah like there's no reason to not install VirtualBox I don't think uh, well while that's installing let me ponder this for a second uh, yeah like 
virtual box is good to have all, pretty much always uh, so yeah I'll do that as well so okay so now I should be able to use tmux already configured and everything since I have my config files uh, there waiting for it and I'll just open it and it should restore cool it just restored everything just like I left it uh, before I reverted re, like reverted its snapshot basically uh, so I have my <laughs> the same checklist over there um, so I'll just copy um, the virtual box thing from here like the link to basically I need two things I need uh, first the Debian package for VirtualBox um, yeah let me just go through it one by one so first uh, I'm already in my temp directory that's good so uh, so that's downloading and uh, once it is downloaded I'll install it with apt That's done. Uh, now the next thing is this: sudo apt install, uh, and then and then um, the path to the package. Like this won't work. I, I need, there needs to be like a slash in the in the in the name of the package so that apt understands that this is a path to a file and not a name of the package in in the, re in the repository uh, so let, let's do that so I was going to install and there's also an extension pack uh, the virtual box extension pack that I'm going to install as well so that I have full functionality so uh, and step three download the virtual box extension pack here's the, the command for it and uh, yes let's download that and uh, so here's a, uh, the command to install to install it into VirtualBox wget uh, wait why is it w get didn't I didn't copy the what I wanted to copy uh, yes the box manager extension pack install accept the license terms and conditions and uh, let's see if there's anything else yes there is also this final step that I need to add my user to the vbox users group so that everything works properly and uh, yeah basically I tried the, this uh, several times and like basically this new group vbox users command is supposed to like perhaps help avoiding avoid uh, rebooting but like whenever I tried it I haven't actually tried it on this laptop but I just don't want to like I just, I'm just going to reboot again uh, and uh, and 
yeah and then I will take the snapshot and then I'll do the rest of the stuff that I wanted to do let me just save the tmux environment first that was control a control s um, for that's for tmux resurrect uh, plugin tmux resurrect and tmux continuum not sure which one of them has this shortcut like control a is my like tmux key instead of control b which is the default and control s is to save but it actually saves like every minute um, automatically but so that just like I just have the exact same uh, state that I had I just did it manually all right uh, so alacrity um, so let me see what else do I want to do here well let me open tmux again and it will restore everything like it was and uh, yes so so I'm done installing VirtualBox I also like have fonts here but the fonts I already transferred my with my user files I have them in my uh, in uh, uh, dot config what was it like I think it's dot local user dot local share and fonts and there I have the uh, Adobe's uh, source fonts uh, already in place so I don't need to do any of this So, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so this is a good time to take the snapshot. Um, okay, so I'll go to sudo time shift. Um, create snapshot installed basic or oh, in installed basic software. I don't know, that's fine. Hopefully, they are renameable. Uh, I can rename it later. All right, so now I have a bunch of things here. So you can see, uh, wait, why is it? Oh crap, it, it didn't do what I wanted, to do, wanted it to do. I, um, Ah, that uh, was not a correct syntax. So, how do I... It's dash dash comments, not dash dash snapshot. Oh my god, okay, so uh, what uh, do I do with that? D 
delete snapshot. Okay, it gives you like it's an interactive thing. Uh, select snapshot, enter snapshot number, a abort p previous and next. Okay, so I can just delete snapshot three, and it's gone. Okay, good. So let me take re uh, retake that snapshot. Uh, create dash dash comments install basic software yeah okay that looks fine you can see that I have a like four snapshots uh, and like uh, the one the one that I one the, the one that was created automatically at the point where I was uh, restoring the system to the first snapshot but uh, basically all that is uh, is good now uh, let's um, let me deal with that audio issue, I guess. All right, so I'm going to <clears throat> uh, do the, like that fix to the, uh, to audio, basically. Um, I, let me just, first of all, try, um, let me try playing an, uh, like a video so that I'll just use one of the links from my from my uh, bash history so I'll just open this video and uh, oh right I still haven't installed the MPV so I need to do that first oh let's do that <clears throat> sudo uh, apt install MPV alright let's install that <clears throat> so when I tried it uh, last time it's uh, it didn't basically the audio didn't work until I installed a, a package from tuxedo uh, which is called tuxedo restore audio fix uh, not sure what that is all about, but that's what happened. So uh, let me just test it again on this fresh uh, install. So uh, let's try opening it. And uh, yeah, uh, no audio is playing. Otherwise, I, I would hear it, uh, from, and you would hear it as well from the speakers. The media keys do work though. Uh, like I can, I'm pressing them right now and uh, um, even muting works and like so the volume is 100% but uh, the audio is not working so uh, I found out what the fix to that is and uh, I already have <clears throat> the package downloaded here it's it's this one tuxedo restore audio fix so I'll just uh, copy that yeah and uh, I'll go sudo apt install dot slash since it's a file uh, and uh, then the name of the package so let's install that and uh, it's also going to install like a bunch of additional things, dependencies. Uh, so, and uh, let's, uh, so it's done installing. And now let's go ahead and um, try opening that video again. OK. 
Okay, so it's still not working. Um, in that case, it must be... <clears throat> Let me see. So... Let me just ch try this. So... Oh. I just set it on mute, I guess. Um, but yeah, without that, so, so the audio has to set be set to pulse, not or not pulse, but else, because I don't have pulse audio installed. Because yeah, I did that in my uh, like in the uh, like uh, before I restored this, uh, reverted the system to an earlier snapshot. But yeah, so. Uh, if it's also then Open data simply. then the audio works so that's the fix to this problem let me just like put it into my config for mpv real quick so that i have it all uh, configured uh, properly so that now i can just like play it Open data. and it works so okay so that's good um got that sorted out um now i guess uh what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna install a bunch of software and then i'm gonna wrap this video up because um basically um yeah there's um so let me first like take a look at this the time shift situation and uh, maybe delete the snapshots that I don't need anymore. So I have first snapshot and then installed basic software, and then basically those like the, the snapshot one, snapshot two. I don't need them anymore. So I can just go sudo time shift dash dash delete and uh, I'll delete snapshot one and uh, do it again. I, I'm not sure if you can like enter multiple numbers here, but I'll just do it one by one for now. And now snapshot two became snapshot one, so uh, like one again. Uh, and yeah, so now I only have my sort of like clean snapshots, so that's uh, that's good. If there is an issue, I can always revert to one of those. Um, okay, so... Yeah, I still haven't tested VirtualBox if everything works there as expected. And uh, I can see that it does. So, like, Debian, my VM has been recognized. Like, so the, it read the configs and uh, the snapshots are showing up properly. So, if I go to, like... Uh, to media over here if there was a problem it would like show like a red exclamation mark um, next to the name name of the virtual disk uh, and since it's not showing that it's working so that's good just another thing I wanted to verify before I uh, go on to the next uh, thing so, um, okay, I'm gonna go go ahead and install a bunch of software. Uh, so I have my checklist over here in front of me. Um, I'm gonna skip like installing W3M for now, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using it very much. I'm, I am gonna install Pandoc, Fdupes, Bat, and uh, this is actually a bit of nonsense because um, because uh, I don't need uh, like Python is already installed and uh, for Lua I need to figure out what version I need. Basically, I, I'm not gonna I'm gonna skip this as well. 
that's the point. Uh, because I still haven't decided quite yet what I what I want to do here. Um, but um, I do want to check if the if it if apt has this uh, program called dust. Okay, it's not, it doesn't have it. Well, that's a shame. It's a sort of like a du uh, replacement. Du is a standard program, but dust is like uh, an alternative, like an alternative which uh, allows you to just quickly see uh, what folders take up most of your hard drive space, basically. But I'll figure out later what to do with that. Uh, maybe I'll have to compile it from source or something. But let me just uh, go ahead and install a whole bunch of things at, at once now. Uh, so sudo apt install, so I'll go pandoc, uh, fdupes, bat. Um, I'm, I am going to install also this package called python what is it? Python. Python is uh, Python three. That basically what it does it just it's create it creates a sim link to Python three uh, called Python. So that you you can just like use Python to uh, access because right now I only have Python three and like some actually some scripts and uh, like programs might use. Python, so that's a good thing to have. Um, that's uh, kind of just like a very small package just for convenience. Then I'm going to install... Well, let me install these things first. And uh, think about the rest while that is running. So, uh, yeah. Okay, they are they already they have already installed. Uh, so the next uh, thing that I want to do is like install the stuff that I have in this media section of my checklist. And um, let me see. So uh, I, you can use the command apt list to check if uh, you already have uh, certain packages installed. So like wget uh, ffmpeg and image magic. I might already have those. Yeah, they're actually all installed, but uh, this, a couple of those as dependencies, basically, they were installed automatically. Um, okay, so sudo apt install. Um, I do want to install area2, which is a command line download uh, uh, program to download files and stuff. Uh, so then uh, I will set ffmpeg to like manually install, so mention that as well so that app knows that I want it. Uh, image magic. Uh, yeah, I already installed MPV. And then SXIV is, a, I think it stands for Simple X Image Viewer. It's just like to view images. Um, then I'll install Zathura as well. That's a PDF reader and uh, a couple of plugins for, or I don't know if they're called plugins, but a couple of components for Zathura as well. CB stands for Comic Book. Uh, then deja vu format support and then PDF support. PDF dash 
Oh, blur. So yeah, I haven't actually ever tried reading a comic book in Zathura, but I just found out that it has this Zathura-CB package, so um, I'll install it. Uh, and yeah, and the uh, news boat. Uh, that's a good RSS uh, command line RSS reader. So, um, yeah, okay, before I move on to heavier stuff, let me install those. Install some heavier software for which is mostly for like content creation, art, and uh, and also some some games. And um, when it comes to games, I only have like what I want to install is Flight Gear and uh, Retro Arc. Not sure if it's pronounced Retro Arc or Retro Arch. I have a feeling that people pronounce it both ways. But the one tutorial that I watched. Uh, it was pronounced retro arc there, so I guess as in like arc for architecture. That makes sense. But then there's Arch Linux, and then <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Arch there also stands for architecture. Um, so I don't know. But um, that's a digression. Uh, so I'm going to install Caden Live for video editing, then EG Sub for subtitle editing. And then Blender uh, for uh, like 3D modeling and stuff. That's something that I want to learn. Um, looking forward to doing that actually on this new computer. And then GIMP, uh, photo editing, Inkscape for vector gra vector graphics. Um, what's next? Krita for digital painting. Then uh, some music-related programs. Uh, Lily Pond. That's for basically to create create sheet music. Basically, you write a text file with a certain syntax, and then you you uh, you process it with uh, Lily Pond, and you get uh, sheet music at the other end of it, like properly formatted sheet music uh, in in like as a PDF or maybe some other format. It's really good. Then uh, Fresco Baldi for, it's basically for Lily Pond to just like make that editing more convenient. Then Ardor, that's uh, a digital audio workstation to write music. And then uh, guitar, guitar, guitarix. That's like a. It emulates various uh, guitar amplifiers and stuff. And then hydrogen, which is a drum machine. Uh, yeah, let me just like have a glance to see if I typed everything correctly. Yeah, and uh, I'll throw in uh, flight gear. And uh, retro arc at the end as well. That's pretty much all I installed, uh, like managed to install yesterday, while uh, just like sort of like testing things out. Um, except for the tuxedo software that which I didn't manage to to get working yet, but basically what I'm in looking into right now is like I have like two things or maybe not two things but like I have a few things to figure out so first of all how to configure displays like my monitors so I have two monitors and I'd like to use them both and like how to use do that without like having a, a, um, a desktop environment installed apparently you, you you're supposed to use this x render command or I hope that's how it's pronounced but um, 
Yeah. But I still haven't uh, learned how to do that. I'm going to be looking into that. And um, basically then I have a bunch of pages open here. That's me trying to figure out what to install to get this keyboard uh, backlight working tuxedo's uh, keyboard backlight so they have like this official uh, package that is called tuxedo keyboard but if i just install it from their like i download the package from their repo and install it it doesn't work i don't know like i, I still haven't managed to get it to work um, then there is also this like backlight control utility which was created by someone else not tuxedo themselves but uh, yeah another developer uh, so i've been messing with that as well i did manage to compile tuxedo keyboard from source but yeah i still i still don't know how like all this fits together um so they have all these like pages explaining things but um it still remains a bit of a mystery at this point to me. So this asks me about like configuring Jack and it asks for real-time permissions. I looked into it yesterday and I think I'm gonna allow that. Alright, so I'll be figuring out those things later, but for now the installation has finished. Uh, so, just thinking if I need to mention anything here. Um, I guess I will perhaps not a bad idea to take a snapshot here again so I will say sudo time shift dash dash create comments installed uh, more software I don't know since I don't have many snapshots at this point I'll know what this refers to plus I'll have the video so uh, let's see pseudo time shift list yeah so I also wanted to check if the like NVIDIA driver recognizes everything and uh, yeah it seems to do that although the font is tiny but Basically, yeah, it's looking good uh, because when I launched it and like when I just like install it in the VM just to just like randomly I, like obviously the VM doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU but yeah it looked different so it seems to be recognizing it properly and uh, I don't get any like warnings or errors on boot which I did get in the, in the VM so I'll I'll assume that uh, the graphics card is working correctly and uh, I installed like a bunch of things right now but I'm not gonna launch them yet um, so yeah I guess okay I guess uh, at this point I'll just like wrap this video up and I'll be continuing uh, with this series and uh, working working out the remaining issues and so, yes, I hope you found this useful and that it helps you to configure your system. 
And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.